The bowguns were introduced alongside the original five Blade Master weapons in Monster Hunter 1 for the PS2. Both of these weapons rely on limited ammunition that the hunter needs to bring with them before the hunt begins. This episode is going to include both bow guns to prevent two separate episodes with repeat information, so Jim in that auto reload skill cause there'll be no breaks as we go through Monster Hunter 1 up to the newest Sunbreak expansion to detail how ranged combat evolved over the generations. A couple of noteworthy things to discuss about the gunner class as a whole. The first thing is how a gunner cannot use Blade Master armor and vice versa, although sometimes the helmet does not care about weapon class. The game will notify the player if they are creating armor that is not compatible with their class. Gunner armor is usually very weak when it comes to defensive stats, but is much stronger with elemental resistances compared to their Blade Master counterparts. The second important thing is ammunition. Hunters need to bring along ammo that is purchased or crafted before going on a hunt as once their ammo is depleted, there is no way to replenish it later outside of crafting, or at least before world. So unless you want to be stuck with normal ones on a 40 minute quest, it is best to stay prepared with extra supplies. Moving the analog stick will unsheath the bowgun. With the weapon out, the hunter can move about with a light jog. Pressing square will sheath the gun. Moving the right analog up will do a weak melee attack with the bowgun. Moving the right analog stick downward will load the selected ammo type. This can be seen above the hunter's item bar. Holding L2 and pressing triangle or X will go through the compatible ammo type that the hunter has on hand. Pressing R3 will fire whatever is loaded in the bowgun. If there is nothing loaded, the hunter will shake their gun in confusion. This animation is quite long, so keep an eye on how much ammo is loaded at any given point. Pressing R1 will go into first person mode. Holding it will switch to an over the shoulder view. Both of these modes allow for the left analog stick or the D-pad to be used for more accurate aiming. The damage the bowgun deals depends on three main factors. The type of ammo, the ammo's level, and where the monster is hit. Keep in mind that hit zones can be different for gunners as compared to blade masters. So before going on a hunt, refer to resources like Kiryanko or a wiki for hit zones. Making a bowgun is as easy as making any other weapon. Although upgrading a gun is different, instead of monster parts, upgrading it in the first and second generation requires cold hard cash. Each bowgun has a different amount of levels it could go up to, and once it's maxed out, that's it. If you want to make a high rank or G rank version of the gun, you gotta make it a new later. When looking at a bowgun description, the main things to look out for is the reload speed and the ammo types that are compatible with the gun. Reload speeds will describe how long it takes to load up any ammo type. The amount of bullets that can be loaded at a single time will also be noted in the description. The long barrel increases the attack stat for heavy and light bowguns. It also decreases deviation and increases bullet speed. The silencer. Once equipped, one level of recoil is reduced and the hunter's stealth is increased. The zoom scope adds in zoom functionality when in first person, while in this mode, moving the right analog stick left will zoom in, and right will zoom out. Unlike the bow, the bowgun has a finite amount of ammunition, but there's a wide variety of ammo types. Normal ammo is pretty much described by its name. It's a normal shot that fires in a straight line and does damage upon impact. Normal 1 is weak but costs nothing to fire. It's a last resort to rely on when hunting. Normal 2 is a go-to as it does fair damage while being an economical investment. Normal 3 isn't much on its own, but it has the potential to burst into shrapnel, hitting multiple times. Normal 3 cannot be purchased at the town, you need to craft it, as with many level 3 ammo types. Pierce ammo hits multiple times as it travels through a monster. Level 1 does the least amount of hits, but a singular hit of Pierce 1 would do more damage than a singular hit of level 2 or 3. Pierce 2 and 3 have more damage potential if the monster is long or wide enough. Pierce has the ability to take advantage of hidden hit zones as it travels within the monster. Pellet is one of the least multiplayer friendly things to bring on hunts. The higher the tier of pellet, the more hits and the larger the spread will be. Pellets have the special ability to magnetize towards a monster's weak area, but this ammo type requires the hunter to stick much closer to the monster to ensure the most amount of pellets land. Crack shots usually have very high recoil and very slow reload speed, but the shot will stick itself to a monster's surface and then explode for a great deal of damage. Both level 2 and 3 require crafting materials to create it. Clutch shot fires out a shell that explodes multiple times upon detonation. Level 1 explodes thrice, while level 3 explodes 5 times, dealing a high amount of fixed damage. Just be very mindful of fellow hunters as this ammo type will send them flying. Like crack shot, level 2 and 3 can only be crafted. Disc Shot is an ammo type that only has a recipe in Monster Hunter 1. In a similar fashion to normal 3 shots, upon contact, the shot will break out into shrapnel for extra hits. 
This ammo type cannot be purchased. Dragon Shot is an odd type of ammunition that deals dragon damage. It cannot be purchased and only a select few bowguns can be loaded with it. A support based ammo type, Recovery Shot can restore a bit of health when fired at a fellow hunter. It is possible to heal monsters as well, so be sure to aim. Shooting Antidote Shot at any poison party member will completely cure them of their element. Demon Shot bestows demonic strength to any hunter that is in the line of fire. Armor Shot is said to make skin as hard as stone. It gives extra defense to fellow hunters. Poison Shots can poison the monster with enough hits. Level 2 requires less shots, but like every other status element, the monster will quickly gain an immunity towards it. Stun Shots will eventually paralyze the target with enough shots. Level 2 requires less shots to land in order to achieve this element. Like the previous element shots before, with enough hits, Sleep Shot will lull monsters into a temporary slumber. Level 2 requires less shots to do so. Trank Shots act in the same manner as Trank Bombs. These are to be used when capturing a monster. Paint Shots act the same as Paint Balls. They mark the monster's location for a select amount of time. Dung Shots act the same as Dung Bombs. Shooting this foul smelling shot on monsters will repel them. Sometimes. The light bowgun is generally a weapon catered towards being a support by inflicting status helmets and supporting the party with buffs and heals. The heavy bowgun usually is compatible with higher damage shots, while having less deviation and larger clip sizes. The light bowgun is also generally much faster at walking, reloading, and sheaving. By just having combination books in the hunter's inventory, their combining success increases. The main drawback to this is the requirement of giving up precious item slots in the hunter's inventory for these books. Combo books also only work if they are brought along as a series, so having books 1, 2, and 4 will only give the benefits of the first two books. The second generation of Monster Hunter introduced the Elemental Shots and, for the Light Bowgun, Rapid Shots. Heavy Bowguns receive the new mod, the Shield mod. With this attached, the gunner will auto-block incoming attacks when they are not firing. Note that armor skills do not affect the blocking capabilities in Old World. Gunners using the heavy bowgun will need to make the important choice of having more damage potential with a power barrel or survivability with a shield. Bowgun descriptions now include more details about the gun itself. Recoil is an important stat, as the harder the recoil, the more downtime there is between each shot. Very high recoil will leave the hunter vulnerable as the next shot is readied, while low recoil allows the hunter to almost naturally rapid fire the shot. Deviation, on the other hand, affects how the bullet travels once it leaves the gun. It could either be partially left or right, or severely left or right. This can make staying and critical distance difficult, due to the varying distance the bullet travels. But it can also make better positioning opportunities. If the gun has no deviation, having the food scale feline temper will randomly add this effect to the bow gun. The second generation introduced the mechanic of critical distance. If the bullet is fired from too short or too long of a range, they can deal less damage. When firing a bullet within critical range, they are given a buff of 50% extra damage. This mainly affects two of the shot types. Normal shots are in critical distance within 0-3 rolls at level 1, up to about 5 rolls at level 3. Pierce shots are a long range shot that are in critical distance starting at 3 rolls and can stay in critical range at about 7 for Pierce 3. Pellets don't really have critical range, it's just kind of depending on how many pellets land. There are five different elemental shot types introduced. These include Flame, Freeze, Water, and Thunder. These elemental shots along with Dragon are special in that they don't have critical distance, but the shots will disappear if they travel for too long of a distance. Flame ammo explodes upon contact with the target while the rest of the elemental shots act as pseudo pierce one as it hits three times, with Dragon shot hitting a total of five times as it explodes. All elements besides Dragon don't have any recoil as a bonus. Rapid Shot is a new light bowgun feature. Rapid takes a single shot and multiplies it. While it does make each shot less effective, if all the shots land, then the damage output will be a bit higher than a single non-rapid shot. Recoil on these shots will be detailed if the bowgun supports it. The recoil of rapid shots cannot be reduced through food or armor skills. All bowguns can theoretically support every ammo type with the right armor skills, but some guns are notably better suited for certain types of ammo. Adding plus 10 for some ammo types will make the basic level 1 ammunition compatible. If there's a level 2, plus 15 is needed, and plus 20 will make all 3 level shots compatible. Both normal and pure sub gives an additional 10% damage buff to those shots only. 
This is not to be confused with Plus, which adds functionality of those shots to the gun. Pilot Up gives 30% extra damage to second gen. In later games, this only gives 20% up. The food skill feline aim slash sharpshooter also gives 10% extra damage to normal shots. Feline temper gives a damage buff, but increases the deviation of the gun. Steady Hand is the white fatalis' armor combination skill that ups the damage of all ammo types by 20%. Usually there's a similar skill in other Monster Hunter games with this same effect. Elemental Attack Up gives an additional 20% to elemental shots, while Abnormal Status Up gives a 12.5% boost in status effects. Reload Plus improves the reload speed by a single level, up to 3 times. There is also a negative effect of this that slows down reload speed up to 3 times. Recoil Plus on the other hand removes 2 levels of recoil with plus 1. This second gen only skill allows the hunter to not require loading the gun after they load up with a stacking ammunition. As a side effect, recoil is set too strong for the bowgun. This recoil cannot be modified by using armor skills or the silencer mod. So this pretty much makes using anything but normal and elemental shots pretty tough. Capacity or load up increases the amount of bullets that can be loaded in at once by 1. Precision's positive armor skill decreases the amount of deviation, the negative skill increases it. Combo up increases the chances of success when crafting. This is mainly useful for saving inventory space, but in most cases just carrying a combination books is more than enough. Shot mix allows for the maximum amount of ammo to be crafted when combining. It is understated how useful this skill can be when dealing with longer hunts. Artillery shots will increase the fixed damage of crag and cluster shots. Feline KO can also make the crag shots deal KO damage when hitting a monster's face. Monster Hunter Tri had a unique creation system for the bowgun. Instead of buying or crafting one, the hunter can pick and choose parts to assemble a bowgun to their interest. The way the game distinguished if it was light, medium, or heavy was through a numbered weight system. If the bowgun's barrel, frame, and stock added to a weight of 29 or less, it was a light bowgun. Anything in the 30 to 70 range will make a medium bowgun, with anything over 71 creating a heavy bowgun. Due to this custom nature, it is possible to make a light bowgun that folds up or has a shield like the heavy bowgun. Another oddity is that the heavy bowgun has the capability of rapid firing shots similar to how the light bowgun did in 2nd gen. A good key addition introduced in the 3rd generation was the gunner pouch for ammunition. Light bowguns can also hop to the side after firing and then once more in the hunter's desired direction. Spread ammo was changed to not have the magnetizing property it once had. This will most likely make the spread ammo go through the monster and hit any fellow teammates on the other side. As noted before, the bowgun is split into 3 different parts the barrel, frame, and stock. The stock contains compatible ammo, affinity, reload, and recoil modifiers. The frame of the bowgun also contains the compatible ammo alongside it, attack stats, affinity, range, reload, and deviation modifiers. The barrel shares the same traits as the frame alongside rapid fire and shield mod capabilities. Changing out components will change the bowgun's variables, upgrading components will also do this, which in Monster Hunter Tri requires monster parts alongside money to do so. Every part has a limited amount of levels it can upgrade to before maxing out. Underwater, the bowgun's critical distance is halved while swimming. This also means that elemental shots will disappear more easily over long distances. Due to the unique concept of bowgun creation in Tri, any bowgun with a weight class in between 30 through 70 will create a medium bowgun. Stronger than a light bowgun and faster than a heavy, the medium bowgun is a super versatile gun that can rapid fire, use a shield, and be super mobile. Depending on the parts used, the mini bowgun can either be a more light-like or a more heavy-like. This even includes some parts requiring the weapon to be folded away when sheathed. This will be noted in the description of the part. Similar to the gun lance's wyvern fire, the wyvern fire shot charges up a blast from the tip of the barrel that explodes at a very close range, hitting twice. The damage depends on the bowgun's attack value, and this shot also deals a little bit of fire elemental damage. The artillery skill will also increase the damage of wyvern fire shots. Subshot is a unique shot made for underwater combat in Tri and 3 Ultimate. It acts in a similar manner as spread. 
when used underwater, sub level 1 acts as spread 1, and level 2 acts like spread 3 with a slightly faster reload. Slicing shot sticks itself to a part of a monster that is hit, then after some time the shot explodes, dealing a decent amount of cutting damage. This is the bowgunner's only method of having a chance at cutting a tail. With the third generation introducing the exhaust status for monsters, bowgunners get to play around with this effect with the exhaust shot. Craig also does a little bit of KO damage when hitting the head, but exhaust damage does notably much more, and as the name entails, this tires out the monster a little bit. With the heavy bowgun no longer having access to auto reload or rapid fire, it gained a new mode in Portable 3rd and 3 Ultimate, Siege Mode. Pressing X plus A with the heavy bowgun out will have the hunter plant themselves on the ground. In this mode, recoils lowered and ammo clips on siege compatible ammo are super extended. Siege mode will last as long as there is ammo to fire or until the hunter rolls out, as the hunter cannot move and is defenseless during this. Siege mode also gives pseudo knockback prevention. Monster Hunter 3 Ultimate had a glitch when it came to the heavy bowgun siege mode while underwater. Pressing L slightly before pressing X plus A while swimming will give the hunter a split second chance to change the ammo type as the hunter goes into siege mode. This glitch allows the hunter to siege any ammo type. Slime is an interesting shot as it requires multiple shots before the slime explodes, dealing similar damage to a large barrel bomb. Because this is more of a status element than an elemental shot, this shot is best used when it can be shot in quick succession. Upon reaching G rank at 3 ultimate, this mini will talk about the limited removal of any bowgun that is rarity 6 or above. For light bowguns, Removing the limiter will remove the functionality of rapid shots in exchange of having a larger clip. Other side effects also include the removal of side hops, but with the simple press of X and A, the hunter will load all compatible shots in a single reload. This reload is fairly lengthy and is not affected by armor skills, but switching to other ammo types afterwards will not require a separate reload. Removing the limiter on a heavy bowgun will remove the siege mode in exchange for increasing the clip size of siege ammo plus massively buffing its attack value. Movement is also much more sluggish with the limiter removed. Rolling is also more delayed after shooting with the hunter moving even slower with the weapon out. Bonus shot adds an extra shot when rapid firing. Good for dealing extra elemental or status damage, but the hunter needs to take more care as they are locked in place for longer. Pressing X when midair would do an aerial attack. With either bowgun, this would do a little bit of impact damage, and upon landing, the hunter will reload whatever shot is selected. 4 ultimate introduce a handy feature when it comes to signaling critical distance. Prior games use color or the size of an explosion to signal if the hunter was in critical distance or not. While the 4th generation does this as well, when the hunter is in critical distance, the screen will shake. Monster Hunter Generations removed the limiter system, although some aspects got reworked into the styles in Hunter Arts. Now within a bowgun subscription page, one of the pages will contain information about internal ammo. Internal ammo is specialized combat, utility, or support ammo that cannot be replenished as it auto-refills before every hunt. Horse Shot fires a single powerful shot that has a similar critical distance as normal ammo. Very similar to 4 shot, long ammo can be fired from a similar distance to Pierce, although this shot will only hit once. Heavy ammo is pretty weak, but when firing at critical distance, these shots do extra partbacker damage. These shots also fire at an arc, making them a bit hard to aim. Stone fires in a more natural manner, but also has a partbacker effect on it. Sting shot always guarantees a critical hit when hitting a monster's weak spot. Dazzling Shot travels at a very fast speed. This is a powerful shot, plus it does not have any critical distance. Shrapnel is very similar to number 3, but the hunter needs to be a bit closer to stay within critical distance. Each hit of Shrapnel does 8 raw to the monster. Slicing Shot is internal ammo generations. However, there is a level 2 version of this shot that will explode into 5 hits of cutting damage. Tri-Blast fires a single shot that is followed by 3 explosions. These explosions deal raw, fire, and if the head is hit, some KO as well. The explosions also have a sonic bomb effect. The critical distance for this shot is very short. Like heavy shot, cannon shots arc when fired, but upon hitting the monster it will explode, dealing fixed damage along with some KO damage if it was hit on a monster's head. This ammo type does not have any critical distance. Another ammo type reserved as internal ammo. Wyvern ammo still acts the same as it did in previous titles. 
Blast Shot is just renamed Slime Shot that is internal ammo. Level 1 applies 25 Blast status with level 2 applying 50. Blast Shot does not have a critical distance. When a bowgun has internal elemental ammunition, it cannot behave as a normal shot with elemental properties or as pure shot in previous generations. Although level 2 pierce will hit 5 times, similar to Dragon. You'll know if a shot can pierce through a monster if it has a P in front of the ammo's name. Group recovery shot cures the frenzy and heals about 20 HP for any hunters that are within the same area. Remedy shot cures all status elements, delays the frenzy and increases health recovery speed for about 30 seconds. Demon shot gives plus 10 sharpness and a 10% boost in bowgun damage to anyone that is within the cone of fire. Demon affinity shot on the other hand gives plus 15 attack and 10% affinity alongside the previous bonuses. The effects of either shot last for about 90 seconds. Armor Shot gives a 20% boost in defense to hunters. Super Armor Shot gives 30% extra defense and knockback prevention. Both of these shots' effects last for about 90 seconds. Demon Armor Shot is a combination of shots. This will give hunters plus 10 attack, 20% defense, 10% sharpness, and critical distance for 90 seconds. These three shot types work the same as their non-internal counterparts. With Striker Style, the Light Bowgun loses the side and back hops. With the Aerial Vault, pressing X plus A after vaulting will have the Hunter fire downwards. If the shot is a rapid shot, pressing X plus A will fire the shot in rapid succession while airborne. Pressing A will fire forwards. If it's a rapid shot, then multiple shots will be fired. Pressing X will do a mid-air aerial attack that reloads the bowgun. In Genu, the Light Bowgun gets a power reload when vaulting. Adept Style gives the Adept Evade for the Light Bowgun. After an evade, the Hunter will automatically do a power reload. This will temporarily give shots a 5% boost in damage. Pressing X after a power reload will have the Hunter run in a desired direction at full speed. Pressing X after an evade will skip the power reload entirely. Alchemy Style not only keeps the Light Bowgun's hops, but it also gives the Hunter the chance to equip 3 Hunter Arts and use the Alchemy Barrel. Reload speed gets reduced by using this style. With the Alchemy Barrel, the Hunter can create Alchemy Shots, which deals the same amount of damage as a normal 3 shot but fires twice and increases the Hunter R gauge slightly with each shot. Valor style while not in Valor mode takes away the hops and increases recoil by one level. Pressing Y and then X will do a Valor reload. Pressing X when the bowgun flashes will do a quick reload animation. Any ammo fired with the Valor reload activated will increase the Valor gauge and negate the recoil downgrade. This is also very useful for reloading some slow ammo quickly. Once in Valor mode, the hops are returned and given an auto shot passive with each hop. Plus, recoil is lowered by another level. Yeah, so, uh, that's two levels down with Valor and Valor Reload. The first two hops will do 10 motion, 10 exhaust, and 10 KO if the monster's head is hit. The third hop will fire two shots, both of them doing 6 motion, 7 exhaust, and 7 KO. These shots have infinite ammo as long as the Valor mode is active. With a quick hop and a blast, the Hunter leaves an explosive surprise where they had once been. This Hunter is not meant to deal a ton of damage, but it's an extra bonus for getting out of the way in style. Bow House is pretty much the limited removal as a Hunter Art. Level 1 and 2 only reloads all shots besides Rapid Fire ones. Level 3 reloads every shot the Bowgun can fire. In Gen Yu, the gauge takes a little bit longer to refill, but it still has the same effects. Taking a pseudo Siege Mode stance, the Light Bowgun fires out a barrage of Rapid Fire shots. At level 1, 15 shots are fired, with level 3 firing 21. Each shot does about 6 motion of damage. If needed, the Hunter can evade out with a roll. Charge Shot will soup up a normal one shot, letting it charge like a bow. At level 1, it makes a fully charged shot deal about 20 motion with 5 charges. Level 3 ups it to 60 motion with 10 charges, plus it has piercing effects. Skills like Normal Up will increase the damage of the charge shots. Striker Style only removes the Heavy Bowgun Siege Mode. Similar to Light Bowgun's Aerial Style, pressing A after an Aerial Vault will fire forward, with X plus A doing a forward launch while firing. If the ammo fired is compatible with Siege Mode, the gun will fire multiple times. Pressing X will do a reloading aerial attack. Unlike the Light Bowgun, the Heavy Bowgun gets a full reload after each vault in stock generations. Plus, they can go into Siege Mode upon landing. Gen Yu provides a power reload after vaulting. The Heavy Bowgun does not lose much of anything with Adept Style. After evading, pressing X will have the Hunter run in a desired direction. Adept evading and doing nothing will do the power reload and pressing X afterwards will transition straight into siege mode. Rolling out of siege mode will include the adept evade, so it is possible to chain evades into siege mode and aim using the control stick to keep dishing out damage. 
Siege build is removed with alchemy style, but reloading is faster by one tier. With the barrel, the hunter can create alchemy shots that will increase the hunter R gauge faster, with the same damage as normal 3. Valor style when not in Valor mode carries the same effects as Light Bowgun did. On top of this, the Heavy Bowgun cannot go into Siege mode. When in Valor mode, the hunter effectively becomes a moving turret that can mow down anything in its sight. Going into Siege mode and firing will have each shot fire quicker than the last. Rolling and pressing B will go into a dash that will not consume stamina. This can be chained, plus the slide and rolls have iframes. Valor sheathing and attack and pressing X will have the hunter roll with the weapon out. This can also be chained. After charging for a little while, an explosive blast is fired out that will do a good amount of damage if the target is in the middle of the blast. Gen Yu changes the damage to be a combination of the weapon's raw attack number. This handy hunter art boosts Heavy Bowgun's movement speed, raises reload speed, and reduces the recoil a considerable amount. At level 3, this is effective for 90 seconds. With a quick reload, the hunter infuses the next amount of shots for gunpowder to power them up. Level 1 powers up 10 shots by 10%, with level 3 powering up up to 22 shots. If managed properly, this can stack up to 99. Slicing Shell is the strongest single hit cutting move that the Heavy Bowgun has. It is a very short range shot, so positioning is crucial. At level 1, this does 90 motion with 10% part break, with level 3 doing 170 motion with 20% part break. Mass Combiner is a great all around skill for the Gunner class. Instead of being an armor skill, this fast charging hunter art allows for the maximum crafting amount for a limited amount of time. Ammo Saber is a very niche skill that has a 20% chance to not consume a single shot. This was later changed in the New World to not consume a shot when fired instead of not consuming from a pouch. True Shot Up increases internal ammo by 20% which can be very useful depending on a bow gun. The 5th generation of Monster Hunter changed how ranged weapons attack. Instead of a traditional RPG style of attack, World's Gunner attack style is more akin to an over-the-shoulder shooter. The form of seeing critical distance was also changed once more. When holding L2, the camera will shift over the hunter's shoulder. In this mode, there is a crosshair. If the hunter is too far away from a target, the crosshair will just stay out of range. A little bit closer, and the orange circle will appear. A little bit closer still, we'll have a second circle appear within the crosshair. This new reticle now shows critical distance. Every hunter in the 5th generation does not require any combination books and are able to craft ammo with a 100% success rate. The radio menu also is a great help going forward, as essentially having a shortcut to crafting any particular ammo the hunter has, already assigned, can save time and possibly the hunter from having to go into a separate menu mid-hunt. The way in which Light Bowgun hops is also slightly different. Hopping once would do a short leap. With another press of X, the hunter will slide in the player's desired direction. Sadly, with New World's changes, the Heavy Bowgun lost Siege mode entirely. However, the role is now naturally much longer to compensate for its slowness. Most of the ammo types have stayed the same, although Normal 3 no longer breaks into shrapnel. It's pretty much as a stronger Normal 2 now. Bowgun modding was overhauled in this generation. When at the smitty, selecting bowgun mods will bring up a menu of options. Recoil Suppressor reduces recoil for some ammo types. Reload Assist reduces reload time. Deviation Suppressor reduces the amount of deviation if the bowgun has it. The bowgun's rarity determines how many of these mods can be equipped at once, and if desired, the hunter can stack these effects for a greater effect. Heavy bowguns can equip one more mod than light, plus a shield mod can be stacked up to four times for a better block. Shield mods are also affected by guard skills now in this generation. When looking at the bowgun's description, there are now some new indicators. The orange one will be for the light bowgun's rapid fire, and the blue one will signify if the ammo can be auto-reloaded. This essentially has it so that the ammo will get auto-reloaded after firing once. This capacity cannot be exceeded with any armor skills, but the benefit of auto-reload is the fast reload speed that could come into use for ammo types like Sticky. Every light bowgun gets outfitted with a special ammo type called Wyvern Blast. These special shots are placed on the ground when pressing circle. Now for these shots to detonate, either a hunter or a monster needs to attack it. The stronger the attack, the more damage these explosions will deal. Each Wyvern Blast can explode up to 5 times before they disappear. These shots take some time for them to replenish. Wyvern Snipe when loaded will have the hunter prone and firing it at a monster will have the shot pierce the target, exploding afterwards multiple times depending on how much it pierced. This shot also does stun damage if it goes through the head. 
Wyvernheart, on the other hand, when loaded, turns a heavy bowgun into a machine gun, with each shot that lands stealing about 20 motion. Both of these special ammo types cooldowns are shown in the bottom right, above the item bar. Wyvern Snipe can only fire when a bar is full, but Wyvern Heart can be loaded and fired anytime. Special ammo boost increases the damage done by the bowgun's special ammunition. The Wyvern Blast, Wyvern Snipe, and Wyvern Heart's damage is increased by 10% at level 1 and 20% at level 2. The combination skill Mind's Eye slash Ballistics extends the critical range for the bowguns. While it doesn't extend the maximum range for critical range, it increases the short range critical distance. With a Clutch Claw attack, the Light Bowgun would do a light attack that would drop Slinger ammo. There is also a new mod called the Evading Reload. Similar to Sregios' passive on his weapons, when doing a slide hop, the Hunter will reload a shot. More sacks of this mod will reload more shots. The Wyvern Blast mod changes a shot to do an evading counter, similar to the Bullet Geyser Hunter art. The Heavy Bowgun, on the other hand, would do a tenderizing spread of shots if the gun has Wyvern Heart, or an Explosive Blast with Wyvern Snipe. There are also upgrade mods for these two special ammo types. Wyvern Heart Plus would do increasing damage with each shot that connects with the monster. Wyvern Snipe Plus, on the other hand, loses its piercing property, but would do extra damage if the shot lands on a weak spot. There is also a scope that can be added onto a heavy bowgun, which increases damage for shots that are in critical range. There is also the Power Barrel mod, which increases pierce, stun, and exhaust effects. As another option, there is a long barrel. This mod will increase the critical range and enhances the ammo speed. The hunter can only equip one of these mods at a time, so pick one that suits your current gun. Bogan mods were reverted back to how they were in Old World. No longer are there specific mods at stack. New mods introduced in Iceborn were also removed. Elemental ammo is separated to include both piercing and non-piercing elemental shots. While the single shot does a good amount of elemental damage, the piercing variety can hit up to 7 times as it travels through a monster. Cluster shots make a return for the light bogan, and all levels of pierce can hit up to 7 times. The higher level of pierce, the lower tick rate is for damage. Shrapnel makes a return as a secondary form of spread ammunition. It behaves like second generation spread, as the shots will try to magnetize onto a monster's weak zone. These shots are generally very weak in comparison to other shot types, but these do work well with the light bowgun's wyvern blast shots. When looking at bowgun descriptions, there are now four icons that can show up. A white icon with two footprints, a green icon with two circling arrows, a blue downward facing arrow, and an orange double arrow. The footprints signify if the hunter can continue moving when firing a shot. The green icon is the ability to move while reloading. Blue is the same icon from World that signifies auto reload, and the orange icon is for the light bulb gun's rapid fire. Elemental reload hampers reload speed, but will boost elemental damage somewhat. The quick step evade replaces the regular dodge for a short dash that powers up the first shot fired after a quick step. This has to be shot immediately after the dash and this has less downtime in between evading and shooting than a regular dodge. Banning Vault flings the hunter into the air and lets him either fire twice, reload, or toss a weapon blast towards the ground. This mid-air shot negates heavy recoil. Banning Maneuver on the other hand lets the hunter slide a good distance either left or right and gives the hunter a temporary boost in damage. Both of these skills are great for quickly repositioning. Soakbind Glide slides the hunter forward quickly and fires a powerful short range blast that can do severing damage. This Soakbind takes two wire bugs and reloads a bowgun at the end of the animation. The heavy bowgun now has the ability to charge up any shot by simply holding down the fire button for a while. 
This powers up the shot a decent amount, and the charge can be sped up using focus. The free Silk Pine Glide flings the hunter straight ahead in an analog 6 direction. The hunter can end this slide with a melee attack or a quick sheath. This is a tactical slide that has good free positioning, but this move does not have any iframes. Swapping out the melee attack for a side tackle, the heavy bowgun gets the ability to brute force their way through attacks like the greatsword. The main drawback is that the hunter can take significant damage depending on the attack that was deflected by the tackle. During a tackle, the gunner is immune to flinching and knockback, and this does more damage and KO than a melee attack. You could cancel the ending animation by shooting. The counter shot plants the hunter down and has them ready for an attack. Upon getting hit, the hunter would charge up a super strong attack. During a charge, the hunter can aim the counter shot or fire it earlier to get sent backwards. This move is powerful and adds quite a bit towards a mount. The counter charger on the other hand nullifies an attack and gives a pseudo focus buff for a limited amount of time. The counter shot takes two wire bugs but recharges quickly while the counter charger uses a single wire bug. The hunter is vulnerable after the initial counter and the counter charger's benefits can be negated if the hunter is flinched after the counter. The healing versions of the mechanical wyvern snipe slash heart lowers the amount of damage either of these special ammo types can deal in exchange for a healing property that only affects the gunner. Wyvern snipe can effectively work as a max potion and wyvern heart can max out a hunter's health gauge a couple of times. But because of how long it takes to load and fire special ammo, this can prove to be less handy in perilous situations versus just using conventional healing items. In the 10.0 update, the light bulb and stronger ammos like Sticky, Cluster, and Slicing were made weaker and have typically much higher recoil. Silk Bind Glide not only caused a single wire bug. The Wyvern Blast shots used in a fanning vault will now contribute more towards the Wyvern ride. Critical firepower increases the damage of normal by 30%, spread by 20, and pierce by 10, but the range of critical distance is shortened and recoil is made higher. Using this skills, recoil down and ballistics can help neutralize these drawbacks. Wyvern counter flings the hunter backwards a short distance and leaves a small explosion as a counter. The counter does little damage, but this wire bug move recharges quickly and the dash itself has iframes. Mechanical Sookbind Shot temporarily turns the light bulb into a machine gun that fires a flurry of shots that deal increased part break damage and mounting damage. The recoil and damage changes done to Sticky, Cluster, and Slicing also apply to the Heavy Bowgun. The charge levels now deal more damage and have increased elemental scaling. Healing Mechanical Wyvern Snipe recovers faster now and the counter charge's cooldown was reduced. Swapping out the ability to charge up any ammo types allows the Hunter to do a vader like crouching shot. This crouching shot increases the firing speed between each shot and increases a heat gauge. When the bowgun overheats, the hunter is locked out of the crouching shot until it fully cools down. Certain ammo types cannot be fired in this mode. Update 13.0 speeds up the recovery speed of the heat gauge and the overheat duration was decreased. The interval between all compatible ammo types were increased. The total number of shots that can be done for normal, pierce, and elemental ammo besides dragon were also increased. Rising Moon creates a floating circle in front of the hunter. Any shots that go through the circle will have its critical range extended. Setting Sun on the other hand has a floating orange circle appear. This circle slows down ammunition that passes through it, increasing the amount of hits piercing ammo can do. The Setting Sun is perfect for piercing and elemental piercing ammo. In multiplayer, other hunters can use each other's circle, and even a light bowgun can use this circle. Level 1 tune-up increases the stats of the silencer and the shield. If none of these mods are installed, the gun gets its reload speed increased by a level. Level 2 also increases the stats of the long slash power barrel, and if those are not equipped, steadiness is increased by a level. The extra attack is about 2.5% extra raw damage. The Bowgun class is a very user customizable weapon class that can be augmented to excel in nearly every situation. This is a weapon that values preparation as much as its performance on hunting grounds. Giving up survivability for the ability to deal loads of damage has allowed the Bowgun to be a favorite as each generation went on. The earlier generations had the Heavy Bowgun be the damage dealer, while the Light Bowgun was usually the team player. They were the ones keeping the monster in place as the rest of the team takes a hold of the advantage gained. When the games got to the new world, it did feel like the Heavy Bowgun lost a bit of its identity. 
The benefits of having a more engaged battle system translated extremely well to the light bowgun, and until special guns like the Glutton appeared, the heavy bowgun largely fell into the shadows of his lightweight counterpart. This identity crisis resurfaced again and stock rise, until Sunbreak introduced the heavy bowgun's crouching fire and extra utilities like the setting sun to boost piercing ammo. My wish for Monster Hunter 6 will be a return to Tri's bowgun building method of creating your own personal bowgun. While this would add a very complex layer to bowguns for both the player and the developer, I would love to see how the newer Capcom developers would curate a modern version of the medium bowgun. I guess that's it. For now.